Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, February the 21st, 2020, currently 1027 a.m. Central Time. February the 21st, 2020. Earlier this morning, I walked into a building. Now, this building that I walked into, I spent a good portion of my adult life inside that building. Day after day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, some Saturdays, some Sundays, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, some Saturdays, some Sundays. Day after day, I spent most of my, a good portion of my adult life inside this building. And I walked into that very same building this morning. I looked around, took care of what I needed to take care of, walked back towards the door, kind of looked around one last time, walked out the door. And as I started walking down the sidewalk, walking away from the building, it hit me. That was probably, in fact, high probability, that was the last time I will ever walk into that building. This building that I spent a good portion of my adult life, this morning, I walked out of that building and that was the last time. For in all, for if I'm going to be honest, that definitely, that most likely, I have to, I don't ever want to say definitely because you never know how you know, life can change. But for all practical purposes, that was it. I'm never going to see that build on the inside of that building again. I, I probably will rarely even see the outside of the building. It's, it's over. I'm, I walked away. And as I walked away, got in my car and, and drove off, and I, I'm, I'm currently here at Victory Baptist Church, as I took, as I made the drive here, which is about from that building to here, probably a good 25 minutes, 25 minute drive. I had a lot of time to think. And it reminded me of a, it reminded me of a truth that I've always understood. And, and sometimes my understanding of this truth has put me at odds with a lot of people and, and gave people a, a perception of me that I don't think was was fair or accurate, but but they didn't understand where I was coming from. But I was coming from because I realized something early on in my life. I don't know. I, I think a large reason I realized this was because of my Christianity. I think another reason I realized this was having my mother die at an early age. So I came out here to the church and I, I have all these other things I wanted to record, all these other programs I wanted to do, but I, I've kind of been dealing with this uh, this issue, the, these feelings. So here I am, microphone on, I'm, I'm sitting in front of it and I'm going to talk about it. I know I know this is, a, a, you're probably going, what is going on? What is he talking about? Well, I, I guess, yes, I kind of started in a, I'm, I'm, I'm being very vague here because I'm trying to process this, but but stay with me. Because I'm, I'm going to challenge, I'm going to challenge your perspective on life. I really want to challenge your perspective on life because I believe many people have a perspective, a point of view, the way they see life, the way they live their life. I'm going to make an, a, a major statement here. I believe that most people's perspective on life, the way they perceive life, their perception, their perspective, their point of view... I'm going to argue that most people's perception, perspective, their point of view, the way they view life is inherently flawed. I'm going to argue that most people perceive life in a way that is that is flawed, that is wrong, and it needs to be corrected. So I'm going to take my little kind of this struggle that I've had today to try to challenge your perspective, your point of view on life. And hopefully when we're all done, we're all going to benefit greatly from it, okay? I know a very cryptic, vague way of starting this, but but hopefully I have your attention. All right, let me, let me explain. I joined the United States Air Force. I think I took off to basic training. I think it was, I think it was February. I think it was February of 1990. 
I believe. I believe it was February 1990. I'd have to go back and try to figure it all out. Went to basic training, Lackland Air Force Base, San Antonio, Texas. From there, Wichita Falls, Texas for my uh, tech school. My first base that I was assigned to was Offutt Air Force Base in, uh, well, it's not really Omaha, Nebraska. I think it's literally the base is located in Bellevue, Nebraska, which is kind of really connected right there with Omaha. Spent a good portion of uh, time there. And then I was moved to Dias Air Force Base in Abilene, Texas. And that is where I spent the rest of my military career, Dias Air Force Base. And on Dias Air Force Base, where I spent most of my time, was inside of the 7th Medical Group. I was medical. That was my career field in the, in the United States Air Force. And that's where I went day after day to go to work, the 7th Medical Group, Dias Air Force Base. I spent so much time in that hospital that, well, it was, a, it was a hospital. Then we transitioned to more of a clinic, a very large clinic. Um, but that's where I went to work. Day in, day out, wake up, go, go to work, go to work. So much of my life in that building. And today was the day that I walked into that same building. I walked into the 7th Medical Group probably for the last time. And here's the reason why I still go to the 7th Medical Group, not to be seen because that got changed. So now my doctor is a civilian provider. So that already limited my time of going because my doctor, I, you know, I no longer go there for my health care. But I was still getting my medications from the pharmacy there at the 7th Medical Group. Well, some things changed. And they basically moved me over to, I think it's called Express Scripts, where they send the medication to your house. So this was the last time I was going in to pick up my medication. So now there's no reason to go back to the building. I don't don't receive my medical care there. I don't... uh, I mean, not, not basically all my medical care has been moved either to a civilian provider, to the VA, and now my medication is going to be sent to my house. Now, that's very convenient, and I'm, and I'm glad that they did that, and, and um, that's wonderful, great. They have, you know, the military has their reasons for doing, doing those kinds of things, usually has to do with money and personnel, understand, per- perfectly, you know, not complaining in any way, shape, or form, but as I walked into the building, you know, it hit me, this is it, man, this I spent a whole good portion of my life inside of this building and I'm about to walk out and it's gone. But, but it reminded me of something that I told myself every single day when I did work there for all of those years going there. Um, I told myself something every single day that what I'm ultimate, that ultimately what I'm doing inside this building, ultimately big picture, it doesn't really matter. In the big picture of things, what I'm doing here doesn't matter. It's not going to be remembered, and no one is going to care. And I would see this play out over and over and over again uh, And all my years in the military. There'd be someone who dedicated 20 years of their life in the military, 22 years, right? They went to work every single day, and they, they got caught up in, you know, uh, how important their career was, getting that position, you know, oh, I got to move here so I can get this reward and I can get I can get this medal and this will help me, you know, get this position and this will help me get this promotion and this will help me here. And, and, and you know, they, they, they work, 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 work. And, 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 many, uh, and many people in the military, if they have an office, they have their little kind of wall of fame, right, where they put their medals and their, you know, anything – Anything positive they got, you know, they, they, they would put it there on the wall for everyone to see. You know, all their accomplishments would be right there. And then when they got ready to retire, they would get a, a like a shadow box, which would have a flag and all of their medals. All of these things to, to hold on to all of these things that they accomplished. But I would see it over and over and over again. They, they, they spent their life, work, work, you know, focused on this, focus on that, worried about the things of work. When they leave work, talk about work, worry about their position, worry about their promotion, worry about all of this stuff, get caught up in the day-to-day things like it was the most important things in the world. And then they would have their retirement ceremony. Everybody would come in. Yes. Yay. They may get a medal. They may get some kind of recognition. People give their speeches. They may get a flag. Woo, right? Everyone's there, okay? 
Um, they may, there may be a cake after, you know, people hand them a card, who knows what. But then everyone after the retirement ceremony, ceremony would be over, everyone shakes their hands, hugs them, whatever, and walks out. And what I would always do is stick around. Somewhere, you know, out of sight, I would just st- sit back and just watch, just observe. And they would gather up all their stuff. They would start walking down the hall. And then I would run up to the third floor where I could see where, where they were going to walk out from. And I would run up to the, to the third floor, look out the window, and watch them walk down the sidewalk, carrying all their stuff. Maybe they had a box after they cleaned out their office, whatever. And they walked down the sidewalk. 20 years, 22 years, it's over. And they walk down that sidewalk and all of the talk about everything that they did, you looked around and literally, this is what it would feel like. Five minutes later, five minutes later, after they're gone from the building, for all practical purposes, they're forgotten. Five minutes after they're gone, someone's moving into their office Every, it's they're forgotten. They're, they're moved on. And within a week, two weeks, three weeks, they're gone. And sometimes you would watch those people who retire. They would come back, you know, all the time. They would come back and try to talk to everyone, try to talk to everyone. And at first, everyone thought it was cool. And then, and then give it about a month. And then people start getting irritated. Why do they keep coming back here? You know, who cares? And, and, and then, and, 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 and then about two months, maybe it would drop off. And then next thing you know, you give it six months, seven months, Maybe they would come back and then, you know, the people they knew that they've moved on and they they walk into that building and they are forgotten. Nobody knows who they are. Nobody knows what they did. Nobody knows what they accomplished. To be honest with you, no one really cares. Everything that they accomplished, all the things that they thought were so important during their time, their perspective was this is important. I got to get this promotion. I got to do this. I got to do that. This is so important. Get upset about this. Argue about this. Fight about this. And it's like like their whole life was caught up into their career, their job. And as soon as it's over, as soon as they walk, before they even get to their car, Everyone else moves on and it all was for naught. It was all for nothing. It did not mean as much as as they perceived it to mean while they were there. Their perspective was wrong. Their perspective was flawed. Now, I know when I say this, I really, it really bothers people and I, and I really, sometimes it offends people and I, and I don't understand why. Let, let me try to explain what I mean, right? I went to work every day. And my job was in the medical world. So and my, for my perspective was I have a job here to take care of patients, right? Patient care, do the best I can, get those patients the best health care they can, take care of their problem, do what I can. And I did do that. I did do the best that I can because I, I, I believe that I not only was that my job to take care of patients, not only did I want to take care of patients and try to show compassionate health care and give them the best care I could, not only did I believe that was my primary job and purpose, I believed obvious, obviously from a Christian perspective that I'm supposed to do my job to the glory of God, not to the glory of me, not so that I could get a reward, not so that I could get a medal, not that I could get recognition. Who cares about any of that? And so I had a, I had a very, very specific perspective that, that really caused other people to get offended. So, so make sure you hear me out. I would go to, I would go to work and do my job to the best of my ability. I would, but I had this very, at times, painful awareness that other than taking care of that patient, that mattered. But in the big picture, in the big scheme, it really didn't matter. Yeah, it mattered for that patient, but everything else that you get caught up in going to work didn't matter. Office politics, who cares? People complaining about this, people complaining about that, this medal, this reward, this position. What does it matter? It's not because it's not going to matter. It may matter at that moment, but there's going to come a time that I'm going to walk out of that building and I'm going to be forgotten. There was a time I could walk down the halls of the seventh medical group. Everyone knew me. It was the joke that if there was a problem, come to me, I could fix the problem. I knew how everything worked. I knew how everything, I walk back in that building now. No one knows who I am. No one cares that I even existed. 
offices that I spent literally a good portion of my life in, now they're occupied by someone else. They don't know who I am. They don't care. Everything that I did in that building is irrelevant and didn't matter. Now, it mattered. Again, there was a temporal, listen to me, there was a temporal significance taking care of a patient, getting them health care, showing them compassion, showing them, you know, uh, friendly, good patient care, right? Uh, sometimes uh, people will use the term customer service, but in the medical world, we don't like that. They're not customers, they're patients, all right? So um, I think that's a very important distinction in the medical world. That mattered. But in the big, in the big picture, in the big scheme, it was all temporal. And we get so caught up that our perception is we make the temporal of greater significance than we should. We, we, uh, we, we focus on the temporal while ignoring the eternal. So I always had this perspective at work that, hey, none of this matters. None of, all this stuff that you're all getting caught up in, all this stuff you're worried about, and oh, I got to go to this, and I, oh, I got to make sure this person likes me, and oh, I need, to, I need to go from this job to that job and so that I can possibly advance here and I can get recognized, and oh, I want to get this medal, and I want to get this, and I want to get that, and I'm going to save all my medals. Why? It's all going to burn up. So anytime I, I received any kind of letter of recognition, anytime I, I received a medal, or I threw those things in the trash, or, or I'd bring them home and let my kids play with them. Because why? Why do I care about keeping them? It doesn't matter. It's temporal. It's temporal trash that's going to burn up. I saw this so over and over. And, and it reminds me of the book of Ecclesiastes where, you know, everything under the sun, meaningless, 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 meaningless. Vanity of vanities. The book of Ecclesiastes is, is basically the journal of King Solomon trying to figure out the purpose and meaning of life. And, every, and, and, and the key phrase there is under the sun, under the sun. Meaningless, 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 meaningless. And because I had this awareness that this was all temporal, all going to burn up, and it w wasn't of any lasting value, I, I checked out of all of the games. I wasn't going to play the political games. I wasn't going to worry about trying to get this person, uh, you know, trying to get this award. I didn't do all of those things. I wasn't going to go, you know, oh, we have this activity. You better, I'm not going to go play your reindeer games. I'm not going to the activities. I have no desire to be a part of all of this. There are other things more important than this place. And so some people perceived me to, oh, you don't care about your job. Oh, you don't care about your career. Uh, and and it, it sometimes created problems. Now, I think some people caught on and said, oh, he's going to come here. He's going to do his job to absolutely the best of his ability. But that's it. He's not caught up in all this other stuff. And I, I watched so many people get caught up in all of that. Their, their, even though they claim to be Christians, their perspective was, their, their job, the temporal was all that mattered. And it's like, well, well no, there's, it's, this is all going to go away. It's all one day, all this, all the time, all the energy you give to the temporal, one day you're going to walk away from it. One day you're going to walk out of that building. Your career is going to come to the end. The job is going to be over. And what are you going to have then? That's why we're told in the Bible to store up our, our treasures in heaven not on earth. We are to seek first God's kingdom. We are to set our affections on things above. We need an eternal perspective, not this temporal perspective. We, we become preoccupied with the temporal while we ignore the eternal. We, we become preoccupied with the temporal while we ignore the eternal. Now, yes, it's... I, when when I when I say this, then I'll get emails and people say, I, I think your perspective is I think you're going too too much to an extreme. I you you've got to hear what I'm saying. I understand that there is some significance in what we accomplish in the temporal. I, I understand that there is some, but let, let me state it this way. It's a temporal significance. It's temporal. No matter how important your job is, it still only has temporal significance. Eternal significance is what we should be worried about. Eternal things. 
when we stand before God, I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Now, I haven't been good and I haven't been faithful. I've made lots of mistakes, but I'm hoping because of Christ, because I'm in Christ and his righteousness is accredited to my account, God will see the righteousness of Christ. Amen. So in that sense, it will be well done and uh, good and faithful servant because the righteousness of Christ has been accredited to my account. We can get into a whole doctrine of justification. All right? But I, I want to be able to stand there and have accomplished things of eternal value. I want treasure in heaven. I want spiritual treasure. I want, I want things of spiritual significance because that's the only thing that's going to last. Everything here is going to burn up. It's all going to rust and decay and burn up. All of your accomplishments, everything you did. It's like you'll you'll find yeah, you'll find adults who all they want to do is talk about the supposed glory days of their high school time. I I, I, I and I had the same perspective when I was in high school. Everyone walking around high school thinking every, that, that this is the most important. Like they acted like that everything was so important. They get caught up in this and this event and this activity and this and this and this and this. And high school, high school, high school, high school. And team, you know, school spirit and all and get caught up in all of this nonsense. And like you're going to walk out that front door. And you know what your uh, high school experience is going to mean? Absolutely nothing, okay, other than a piece of paper, all right, that says, yeah, you graduated, wonderful, you you, you can be the top student, it does, ultimately you walk out of high school, it doesn't matter, you get to college, they don't really care who you were in high school, you get a job, they don't care what you did in high school, all of that time and energy and emotion that was poured into your high school experience when you walked out that door after you graduated, it didn't matter. Because it was temporal. It did have some temporal significance. Please hear me. I don't want, I'm going to get emails, people arguing with me, and you're going to be missing the point. I am acknowledging temporal significance, but I'm comparing temporal significance to eternal significance. And when you put temporal significance next to eternal significance, the temporal significance in comparison doesn't mean anything. It's useless. It's worthless. It's pointless. And we get caught up. People have this this temporal perspective on life and they get so caught up in it, preoccupied, energy, time, focus, worry, concern, talk. (laughs) You know, it's like some people, it's all they can talk about is their job and this and that. And it's like you're not talking about anything that has any significance other than temporal significance. So what is your perspective on life? Do you have an eternal perspective? Or are you preoccupied with a temporal one? I don't know where you work. But there's coming a, there's coming a day that you're going to walk out of that building for the last time. And everything you did, all those hours of worrying about it and focusing on it, it's not going to matter. Now, I'm not saying go to work and don't care. No, you need to do your job. And if you're a Christian, you need to do your job to glorify God. You need to do your job. You need to do a, you need to have a good work ethic and, and do what you're, you're paid to do. Earn your pay. Got it. And it's no, no, there's nothing wrong with trying to be the best at what you're doing, but you've got to keep it in perspective. <laughs> no matter what you accomplish there. You're going to walk out. I'm telling you, whatever, if you have an office and you're sitting in an office right now, you're going to walk out of that office one day and five minutes later, there's going to be someone else ready to move into that office and they're going to forget who you are. You're going to leave. You're going to come back six months, come back a year later. And nobody's there is going to even remember who you were or going to even care. Learn from, I, 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 I'm, I'm so glad and and on one hand, I'm so glad that I've always had this. Pers- I had this perspective in school when everybody else was so caught up in all the drama of school. I'm like, none of this really matters, man. None of it matters. And and that's even before I became a Christian. 
I still realize it didn't matter. I real, I still realize we're 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 getting caught up. We're we're playing these reindeer games to use that terminology. We're 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 playing these games, and and none of it matters. We 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 assign meaning and significance to things that we assign a false meaning and significance to things. We give things a greater meaning and significance than they really have, than they really possess. Because we, we long for meaning and significance. So we assign meaning and significance so that we can feel it. But it's, a, it's a, an illusion. It's a fraud. It's fake. It's fool's gold. We assign the meaning. We assign the significance to it. We get caught up in it. It's like none of this matters. Who cares about school spirit? Why? Who cares? It's just a place I got to go to get a piece of paper. Doesn't matter. It's not my identity. <laughs> Your identity is the high school you went to? Give me a break. I realized in high school, it didn't mean anything. <laughs> it's all a joke. It's like, how, it's like, how can people not see the reality here? You get out, you know, it, it, it's, well, I could go on and I could go on for hours about this. And whenever I do, I, I always hurt everyone's feelings because there's so many people are caught up in this. I, I'm just challenging you. you. You can grasp onto all of these things as hard as you can. You can grab, you can hold on to them and say, oh, great significance and great. And you can pull out your, your, your high school yearbook and you can pull out all the awards you got at work. You can hold, you can hug them, hold on to them, say, oh no, they mean something to me. Well, go ahead. Because that's, you're assigning a, 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 you're, you're assigning meaning to those things that, that does not equal the reality of those things. Ultimately, didn't matter. Ultimately, it's all going to burn up. You know, somewhat of a popular saying. You don't see it. You know, you don't. You, if you watch a funeral pr- procession, you don't see the hearse carry, you know, with a U-Haul trailer, right? Because you, you're not taking any of it with you, and even, even if you bury it with you, it's not going anywhere. It's just going to lay in the ground and rust and decay. We need a better perspective. We need an eternal one. So I would challenge you today. Do what you need to do in the world, the temporal world. Do what you do the best you can. Earn the money that you get paid. Be a good employee. But don't forget that ultimately it's all from from an eternal perspective. It has no lasting value. Focus on the souls of the people around you. The people around you are going to die, and if if Christianity is true, there's a heaven and or a hell. Focus on the eternal souls around you. Focus on storing up treasures in heaven. Focus on setting your affection on things above. Focus on the eternal, because the temporal is going to end Your life is going to end. All the things that we think are so important, they're going to come to an end. And we get so caught up in them and we assign them greater meaning than they truly possess if we will look at them in a correct way. All right, I'm going to stop right there. I know it's kind of a... That's the wonderful thing about having a podcast. You can just share these kinds of, of thoughts and ideas that, well usually are bouncing around in my brain, but I can, I can share them with you. And hopefully it will spark you to, to rethink things. Hopefully, hopefully my perspective will challenge you. My perspective has never been well received by people. And maybe, and, and, and to be fair, I probably wasn't always, <laughs> I probably didn't always handle it the best. All right. I would be the one in school going, Hey, you realize none of this matters, right? You realize all of this is stupid, right? You realize this is all a waste of time. You realize who cares what happens in this high school? Who really cares? Okay. Yeah, I probably wasn't the, I probably wasn't the right person. Yeah, I probably didn't handle it the right way. And at work, I'd be the same way. Yeah, oh, 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 wait. What's the drama today? Oh, what are we so upset about today? Hey, you know what? It doesn't really matter because no one really cares. You're assigning some meaning here. Because 
because you want this day to, you want to feel like you're doing something. Just do your job and be quiet and don't get worried about all this other stuff because it doesn't really matter, okay? Oh, oh, look, you put that new medal you got on the wall. Ooh, aren't you, did you accomplish so much? Okay, you know that medal means nothing? It means someone recognized you and great, you did a good job, but the medal doesn't mean anything. But but we hold on to the we hold on to that recognition like it means something. It gives us a, an identity, and, and I think oh, well we could really get into a theological discussion. For a Christian, your identity, you find your identity in Christ. Your identity is not your job. Your identity is not being a parent. Your identity is not being being or doing or accomplishing. Your identity is to be in Christ. That's, that's your, your identity is found in Christ. And I, I don't, I think many Christians find their identity in everything else. And because we find our identity in everything else, we assign a greater value to it because we find, we want to give ourselves, uh, we want a feeling of some kind of meaning because we're not truly finding our meaning. We're not finding our identity in Christ. We're not finding our meaning in God. And we're not finding our purpose in serving that God. So we replace, we replace our identity with something in this world. We, we replace meaning with something in this world. And we replace purpose for something in this world. And therefore, our entire perspective is flawed and wrong. And we end up with a temporal perspective instead of an eternal one. All right. Yes, you're going, wow, that, that was an encouraging message. It is encouraging. It is encouraging. If you think about it, hey, all of this stuff around you, it doesn't matter. But there's an eternity waiting, awaiting you. There's, there's, there's something of eternal value. That's good news because everything here is going to burn up. Everything here is it's going to fall apart. Everything here, everything here, it, it, everything here has no lasting value. So you can literally grasp onto something of eternal significance. You can find an etern- you're, you can find an identity that is in Christ. You can find a meaning that is in God. You can find a purpose that is in God that is eternal, that is significant, that is spiritual, that is lasting, that is transcendent, that is far greater than anything temporal that you can grab onto, hold on to, or care about. There, it that is good news. That's great news. All right, you can email me your thoughts about the temporal, the eternal, perspective, life, purpose, meaning. Uh, we, you can, you, Whatever you want to go, I, I, I know someone's going to mis, misunderstand everything I just said, but that's okay. All right, email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. Thank you for, thank, thank you for at least giving me the opportunity to think out loud and just struggle with my own feelings of, of, of being reminded of a truth that I've known for a good portion of my life. And again, I think the reason I've known this is because of the death of my mother. I think that, that, that when, I, when I saw, when, I, when, I, when my mom died, I think it really hit me that, man, you can get so caught up in all, all the things that she did, all the things that she, she's gone. She did all the things that she wanted to see, all the things she wanted to, she didn't even see the things she wanted to, no, it just ended. So all that time that she wasted doing other things and it ended. And I don't know when my life is going to end. I'm not going to waste it focused, being preoccupied with things that are not going to matter. I need to be preoccupied with something that's going to last beyond right now. All right, I'll stop right there. Everyone have a great day. God bless.